Welcome back. Uh, this uh, presentation is about what we've uh, found so far about algebra, also known as Introducing Algebra Part 4. Do you agree that we've been trying to solve puzzles and practical questions by using a letter to replace the key number we were looking for? What were the steps that we followed to, to get there? So here was the first step. Let's use a letter to stand for the missing value. I think we started all our problems in the same way with this first step. Do you remember what we did after that? Can you think of the next step? Was this it? Building a mathematical sentence or equation step by step to use all the given information. I think we did that in every one of our examples. What about the next step? After we set up our mathematical sentence, how did we use that to solve the puzzle? Do you remember that what we then did was to try and unpack our present and go back to that original number by reversing each of the steps in reverse order. So they were the basic steps we used to solve our puzzle or to find the answer to our practical problem. Are you ready to do a bit of practice? Let's have a look now at some problems. Here we have four problems of a fairly basic type. Let's see if we can use our steps to solve the problem. You can see X has already been used in each of these problems to stand for a missing value. We have the mathematical sentence so now all we need to do is to unpack our present by reversing each of the steps. So let's look at x in the first one here. What's been done to x? It has been times by 2 and the answer was 8. Let's unpack our present by dividing both sides by 2 and if we do we'd have x is equal to 8 divided by 2 is 4. You might like to pause the presentation now and try these other three or you can just watch as we go through them now. Let's look at the second one now. There's x. What's been done to x? It's been divided by 2 so we will now times by 2 to get x back again and so x will equal 3 times by 2 is 6. So x would be 6. So let's think about each of them the same way. Focus first on the missing number. What's been done to it? It's been times by 3. To get it back again, we will unpack our present. We'll divide by 3. We have to be a little bit careful this time because when we divide negative 9 by 3 we have to remember that dividing a negative by a positive will give a negative answer and the answer will be negative 3. So this stage you might have to think about just all the work that you've done with positive and negative numbers. Let's look at the last one now. There's x. It has been divided by 3. So to get x back again, we need to multiply by 3. So then x would be the negative number 2 times by 3. And so x would be equal to negative 6. Again, trying to remember the rules regarding directed numbers or positive and negative numbers. A negative times a positive is a negative. So how did you go? That was the first little set, just perhaps as a warm-up. I do really want you to try and solve it as a mathematical sentence or equation by unpacking our present, reversing each of the steps. In this case, there was only one step rather than just doing trial and error 
for x. Let's have a look at some more. Well, here we are. Here are some more. Let's go about solving the puzzle in the same way. Let's look at x here. What's been done to x? There's a 2 here. It has been times by 2, first of all. Then we move along and find that 1 has been added to it afterwards. So let's unpack our present. Going backwards now. So let's take away 1. And we would have 2x equals 9 take 1. So 2x would equal 8. And then going backwards up here, we would now divide by 2. And x would equal 8 divided by 2 is 4. If you want to pause the presentation now and have a go at some of these others. We'll move on now. Let's have a look at this one. There is x. It has been divided by 2. And then 3 has been added. To find the original value of x, we will do the opposite operations here. First of all, we will take 3. And that will leave x over 2. And on the other side, 7 take 3 is 4. Now, if we reverse negative 2, dividing by 2, sorry, we will multiply by 2. And x will be equal to 4 times 2 is 8. You can see, unpacking our present works very nicely in trying to find the value of the missing number, x. Here we are. x is in here. What's happened to it? It's been times by 3 firstly, and then 2 has been taken away. So let's reverse those steps coming up from the bottom now. We will add 2, and find that 3x, before we took that 2 away, was actually 9. Now reversing the multiplying by 3, we'll now divide by 3. So x will be 9 divided by 3 is 3. Let's do the last one now. Here's x. What's happened to it? It's been firstly divided by 3. Then we have taken away 5. So let's reverse those steps now. First of all, add 5. So we would be back to x divided by 3 would have equaled 6. Now it's been divided by 3. To get x back again, we'll multiply by 3. So x would be equal to 18. How did you go with those? Have a look and just check them out and we'll try some at the next level up. Here we are. Can you see how these four are different from the last four mathematical sentences? Let's look at the first one. Where is x? So x is in here. What has been done to x? Firstly, it was multiplied by 2. Then in the top line there, 1 was added. Then after all that, it was all divided by 3. So to find that mystery number x again, let's go backwards up here, reversing these steps. First of all, we will multiply by 3 and get back to 2x plus 1. And 2x plus 1 must have been 5 multiplied by 3, which is 15. Let's now take away the 1. Getting back to 2x, 15 take 1 would have been 14. And finally, dividing by 2, 
x would have been the number 7 at the beginning. How did you go? Would you like to pause the presentation now and have a go at these other three? Otherwise, away we go. Let's look at the next one. What's been done to x? It has been multiplied by 2. But this time, the next thing that's been happened straight away is we've divided by 4 and then finally added 3. So things have happened in a slightly different order here. And we have to take account of that when we try to get back to x. We're going to go in reverse order, doing all the opposite steps now. So let's take away that last 3 and get back to 2x on 4. And 7 take 3 would have been a 4 on that side. So now let's reverse the dividing by 4 by timesing by 4. So we'll be back to 2x equals 4 times 4 is 16. And reversing the timesing by 2 by dividing by 2. X would be 16 divided by 2 is the number 8. How did you go? Let's have a look at the next one. So here's x in here. What's happened to it first of all? It's been multiplied by 3. And then 2 has been taken away. And then it was all divided by 4. So let's go and reverse those steps. Unpack our present. Let's multiply by 4 first of all. That will get us back to 3x take 2 equals 20. 5 times 4 on the other side is 20. Let's now reverse the taking away of the 2 by adding 2. So we'd be back to 3x equals 22. Now let's reverse the timesing by 3 by dividing by 3. And x would be, uh oh, 22 over 3. This is the first time we didn't have a whole number. But that doesn't matter. 3's into 22 goes 7, 3's are 21, and 1 over. So our number, our mystery number here, was 7 and a third. No one said it had to be a whole number. But this is the first time we've seen an actual fraction come up. Let's have a look at the last one here. Here is x. What's happened to it? Oh, it's been multiplied by negative 2 now. And then 1 has been added. Then finally, everything has been divided by 3. So let's unpack our present again. First of all, we will multiply by 3 and get back to neg 2x plus 1. And if we multiply by 3 on the other side, 5 threes are 15. Let's reverse the addition of 1 by taking away 1. We'd be back to neg 2x and 15 take 1 is 14. Now x has been times by neg 2. Let's now divide by neg 2. So x would be 14 divided by neg 2. Back to these positive and negative numbers again. So a positive number divided by a negative number is a negative number. So it will be the answer neg 7. How did you go? Can you see that we're gradually building up the number of operations we're doing to that mystery number. And we have to unpack all of them to find our present at the end. Let's have a look at one more set. Here they are. I wonder if you can see why they might be a little bit different. Let's have a look at the first one. We start in the same way. Here we'll have a look at x 
and what's been done to x? It's been multiplied by negative 2. So it's, the terms have been put in a different order now. The x term is at the end, negative 2x. So what else has happened? Well, there's a 1 here. This 1 is actually plus 1. Its sign is off to the left. So actually, we have added 1 before dividing the whole thing by 3. It's actually very similar, or is it the same, as the last one over here. It's the same problem, isn't it? With the turns put in a different order. So let's see how we go with unpacking our present this time. Let's go opposite operations again. So we'll multiply by 3 and we get 1 take 2x back again equals 5 times 3 is 15. If we then subtract 1 we get back to neg 2x and 15 take 1 is 14. We then divide by neg 2 we get x is 14 divided by neg 2 is neg 7. As we found before, over here. So you might like to stop and think about what's happening there when we put the terms simply in a different order. Do you want to pause the presentation now and have a look at the last two? Otherwise, we'll just go on now. So in this one here, let's look at x. It's been multiplied by 3. But then we have a neg 2 here. So actually 2 has been taken away. And then everything has been divided by 4. So let's again reverse those operations. Let's times by 4 we get back to neg 2 plus 3x and 5 times 4 would be 20. If we then add 2 then we would be back at 3x equals 22 and reversing the timesing by 3 the di by dividing by 3 we have x is 22 over 3 that's at seven and a third again, which we found before. Let's have a look at the last one now. Focusing on x, it has been multiplied by neg 2. Then this one here is a positive one. The sign in front would be adding 1 and then the whole thing's been divided by 3. So let's reverse these operations again, going backwards. So let's multiply first of all by 3, get 1 take 2x back again, and 5 times 3 is 15. Then if we reverse the addition of 1 by take 1, we'd be back to neg 2x, and 15 take 1 is 14. And then finally, dividing by neg 2, x would be 14 divided by neg 2, which would be neg 7. So just noticing here that in that last row of 3, the first one here, and the last one, the same problem. Did you notice that? A little bit of practice for you. Alright, what I'd like to do now is to leave you with uh, a set of problems and uh, see how you go. So uh, let's have a look now. Here are your practice mathematical sentences or equations. Now I've set them up 
in three levels. So you can see level one and level two. We come down here and there's level three there. So what I want you to do now is to pause the presentation and try those eight problems at level one. Then I want you to come back and see what the solution looks like and check your answers. So could you pause it now? Here we are back again. Here we have X. 5 has been added. So to get X back again, we'll take away 5. And we find then 7 take 5 is X is equal to 2. Same idea here. There is X. 4 has been taken away. Let's reverse that by adding 4. So X will be 2 plus 4 is 6. Here is X. It's been multiplied by 2. So to get X back again, we'll divide by 2. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we look at X in this one now. X has been divided by 2. To get X back again, we will times by 2. And X will therefore be 5 times 2, which is 10. What's happened here? X has had 2 added to it. We must now take away the 2. Find out what X was. So negative 3 take 2. Better check this with these negative numbers is negative 5. Here is X. 3 has been taken away. To get X back again we will add 3. So X will be equal to neg 1 plus 3 which is watching positives and negatives again. Neg 1 plus 3 is positive 2. Let's look at X in this one. X has been times by 3. To get X back again, let's divide by 3. So X will equal neg 6 divided by 3. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So it will be negative 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Looking at the last one now, X has been divided by 3. To get X back again, we'll times by 3. And so X will equal neg 2 times by 3. A negative times a positive is a negative. It's going to be negative 6. So mark your work. How did you go? Go back and check through it again and make sure you're happy with that. Let's have a look at the level 2 questions now. And again, what I'd like you to do is to pause the presentation and have a go at these eight questions and see what you think. Or maybe just the first four and look at the solution I give you and pause again and try the second four. OK, could you pause it now? Here's our solution. Let's have a look at X in there. It's been multiplied by 2, and then 1 has been added. So we will do the reverse now. Let's take 1 away. We'll be back to 2x. And if we take 1 away from 17, we'll have 16. We then reverse the multiplication by 2 by dividing by 2. x will equal 8. Let's have a look at the next one now. Here's X. It has been multiplied by 3. 5 has been taken away. So let's reverse those steps now. Let's add 5 to both sides here. We'll have 3X equals 12. And then dividing by 3 to get X back again. Have 12 divided by 3 is 4. Looking at X here. What's happened to it? It's been divided by 2. Then 1's been added. So reversing now. Let's take the 1 away. 
we'd be back to x divided by 2 and 6 to 8 1 is 5 let's reverse the division by 2 by multiplying by 2 so x would be equal to 5 times 2 is 10 Get the last one of the four here. There's x. It's been divided by three. And then we have subtracted four. So do the reverse now. Let's add four to both sides. We'll have x over three. And one plus four is five. We then multiply both sides by three. Of x is five times three is fifteen. You might like to pause the presentation now and just check your last four and have another go at them perhaps. Well, here's the solution now. Looking at x, it's been multiplied by four and two's been added. So reversing those steps now, let's take the two away. So four x will equal neg six, take two, better write this down. 4x will be equal to neg 8. Then dividing both sides by 4, x will equal neg 8 divided by 4. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. So it will be x is neg 2. Let's look at x in this one. It's been divided by 4 first of all. Then 2 has been taken away. So let's reverse those steps now. Let's add 2 to both sides. So this would be x over 4. And add 2 to the other side. Neg 2 plus 2. Oh, that is 0. So x over 4 is 0. If we then multiply both sides by 4, we'll find x is 0 times 4 or just 0. When you get ones like this, or for each one actually, you can just put it back and check it out in here, like we did right at the beginning, to see if the answer works. Let's have a look at x in this one. It's been times by 3. 2 has been taken away. So let's now reverse those steps. Let's add 2. We get back to 3x and 8 plus 2 is 10. Reversing the timesing by dividing, we have x is 10 over 3. And so x is the mixed number 3 and a third now. Remember, we don't necessarily always have the missing number, a whole number. Let's have a look at the last one here. There's x, it's been times by 2, 5 has been added, so let's reverse those steps, let's take away 5, get back to 2x, and 18 take 5 is 13, let's divide both sides by 2 now, x will be equal 13 over 2, or this time again, mix number 6.5. So how did you go? Perhaps you need to study these a little bit more, particularly those perhaps with fractions as the answer, in the answer, or with negative numbers. So I'd like you to pause and have a look through those uh, before we uh, move on to level three. Well, here we are, level three, and I think you can see the difference between each of these levels, similar to the practice problems we were doing before. She might like to pause the presentation again now and try these four. I'm going to go on to the solution now. So let's have a look at x first of all in here. It's been times by 3. And then 1 has been taken away. Then everything has been divided by 2. So let's reverse those steps now. First of all, We'll multiply by 2, get x, 3x, take 1 back again, and multiplying the other side by 2, 
we'd have 8. Let's reverse the subtraction of 1 by adding 1. We'd have 3x equals 8 plus 1 is 9. And reversing the times in by 3, by dividing by 3, we'd have x is 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Let's look at number 2 now. There is x in there. It's been times by 2. 5 has been added. Then everything has been divided by 3. So let's reverse those operations now. So we'll first of all multiply by 3. Get back to 2x plus 5. Will be 5 times 3 is 15. Let's then reverse the addition of 5 by taking 5. So 2x will equal 15 take 5 is 10. Reversing the doubling, multiplying by 2 by dividing by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Let's look at number 3 now. There's x. What's happened? It's been multiplied by neg 2. Then right next to it, 1 has been added. Then everything's been divided by 3. So let's reverse those steps again now. Let's multiply both sides by 3. Get neg 2x plus 1 equals neg 1 times 3 would be neg 3. Then let's remove that one, subtract 1 from both sides. Neg 2x would equal, watch this now with our two negatives here, neg 3 take 1. So neg 2x is further down the number line at neg 4. And then let's divide by the neg 2. And x then would be neg 4 divided by neg 2. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And 2's and a 4 goes 2. So the answer is positive 2. Let's look at the last one now. Here's x in here. It's been multiplied by neg 3. Then 2 has been subtracted. And the answer has been divided by 2. So let's reverse those steps now. First of all, multiply both sides by 2. We'd have neg 3x take 2. Is neg 4 times 2 is neg 8. A negative times a positive is a negative. Let's reverse the subtraction of 2 by adding 2. We would have neg 3x. Let's write this down now. Neg 8 plus 2. So that would be neg 3x is neg 6. Then reversing the multiplying by neg 3. So we will divide by neg 3. So x would be equal to neg 6 divided by neg 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So 6 divided by 3 is then positive 2. How did you go? Have a look back over the steps and just make sure you can see what's happening. Because uh, from now, you might uh, like to get uh, your textbook, whichever one uh, you use, and go to solving equations and do some more practice perhaps, just to review that, and so that uh, you feel really confident about solving these equations. What we're going to do next is to look at working with x and doing some more operations with x, because it is just another number. So uh, I look forward to seeing you in the presentation about working and developing skills with X. See you then.